All right, so we'll keep moving on through chapter 12. So this is, we're going back to 12.1 parametric equations after uh, doing a quick stop in 12.4, which is the conic section. And that's because we needed to refresh, review what the equations of the different conic sections are. So we can from there redefine them in terms of parametric equations, all right? So, so this is a, this is a, there's a picture here that again, uh, clearly uh, the, ver the vertical line test fails here, right? Because in this case crosses one, two, in fact, three times, right? And, but again, it depends on how you are defining this trajectory if you are de defining this trajectory in terms of a third vari of third party variable t which well for this situation we are going to refer as time well uh, a car for example so you can think of a map you know so um, this is this is the this is the trajectory of some highway maybe in the mountains and well of course if we have a car right here going through through that, uh, through that pathway, of course, is never in two different places at the same time, right? So, yes, at some, if, if we put an, uh, a Cartesian plane as a reference, yes, the car is going to be at the same value of x, but never at the same time, but rather at different times. All right, and we're going to have a look at one example on a how do we graph these kind of equations and how do we interpret them and there's so little extra that is that actually makes the whole difference from the type of functions that you already know from your algebra courses. So now, how do they look like? So these equations look like, this type of parametric equations look like systems of equations because of this uh, curly brain that we have and yes we have two equations one equation that is going to give us the position in the x direction and a second equation that is going to give us the position in the y direction at different values of time all right so this is what we're going to do we are going to find we're going to determine rather the uh, the the point x y four different values of t and what we do in this case is plug in the corresponding value of t on both equations let's start with t equals to zero well when t equals to zero plug in zero on both equations well for the x equation zero squared minus two times zero is going to be zero and for the y equation zero plus one which is going to be one so zero for x one for y all right and well, so what about one? Number one, okay, so for the x equation, that's gonna be one squared minus two times one, which is negative two. One minus two, isn't that negative one? And for the y equation, one plus one equals to two. Mm, let's see, number two, t equals to two. Two squared minus two times two that's going to be 4 minus 4, which is 0. And 2 plus 1 equals to 3. And let's keep going. Plugging in the value of t equals to 3. That's going to be 3 squared minus 2 times 3, which is 6. So that's 9 minus 6, which is 3. And 3 plus 1, which equals to 4. And last but not least, uh, that's going to be 4 squared minus 2 times 4. Okay, that's 16 minus 8. That's 8. And 4 plus 1, that equals to 5. All right. And so we just filled in the table. What we're going to do in this case is draw a Cartesian plane to draw, to plot these points. So you can see what's the, what's the resulting shape. All right, so what do we have? One, two, okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, eight, nine, and how many do we need? One, two, three, four, four, eight, three, four five. Okay, that's enough. So let's plot this point. So, number one, the first point. So, okay, let's write them as order pairs, zero, one, negative 1, 2, 0, 3, 
3, 4, and 8, 5. Okay, so the first point, 0, 1. So that's going to be the first point right here. The second point, negative 1, 2. The third point, 0, 3. The four point, three comma four, I'm going to go one, two, three, and four. Whoops. And eight comma five. So that's three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And I'm going to go all the way here. Yes. Now, in this case, uh, as opposed to functions f, f of x equals to y that you plotted in your intermediate algebra and pre-calculus or college algebra, I mean, those functions gave rise to just many points that you plotted them in whatever order you wanted. In this case, uh, these order pairs follow an order of time in this case. So in this case, at at equal zero, we, we plotted this first, and then that one. So that means we are going to draw this. Oops. We're going to draw this in this direction. And in this case, parametric equations as opposed to function to or to rectangular functions, f of x equals whatever y function, these functions have a sense of direction. And, we, and whenever we draw the graphs of parametric equations, we need to draw these arrows right here to denote the direction in which the, the particle is traveling along this pathway defined by this, uh, this parametric equa these parametric equations. You know, so, and also, let's label this as, uh, let's label this as t equals to zero, t equals 1, t equals 2, t equals to 3, t equals to 4, and of course, I mean, we can go on to t equals 5, t equals 6, but I mean, it's, this is just to give you one uh, basic picture of what a parametric equation is. Well, so, um, now, so you might ask yourself, well, well, actually, the, the main point of this is, number one, be able to... Um, to work with parametric equations, how to plot them, how do they look like, what's the extra, in, in this case, as opposed to the usual rectangular functions, which in this case is a sense of direction. Now, in this case, what we're going to do, uh, it's they're, out, they're also asking us to identify the curve. Okay, well, let's look at the shape. Clearly, it's a parabola, right? However, we're going to get the equation of the parabola from the parametric equation. So, in this case, well, let's see. So, from here, from the second equation, so what we're going to do is to, to eliminate the parameter. When we have y equals to t plus 1, and in this case, t equals y minus 1. And we're, what we're going to do is go back to the first equation and replace the t's with y minus 1. All right? So in this case, well, I'm going to go back to x equals to t squared. Okay, let me write it down. t squared minus 2t, which in this case is uh, y minus 1 squared minus y minus 1, or well, 2 times y minus 1, equals to y squared minus 2y plus 1 using the binomial square formula, and minus 2y plus 2. And let's clean well, let's combine like terms, so negative 2y minus 2y, that's going to be uh, negative 4y, and 1 plus 2, that's going to be uh, uh, 3. So y squared minus 4y plus 3. And well, look at this function, isn't it a quadratic function? 
parabolas are described by quadratic functions. Well, how about we write this equation in vertex form so we can actually check our results with what we got from the original plotting. So let's go ahead and do that. So uh, let's see in order to do that. So that's a y squared minus 4y plus some number that completes the squared plus 3 minus that number that completes the square. And in this case, the number that completes the square is going to be the coefficient of y to the first power, which is negative 4. That divided by 2, that's a negative 2. And then square, that's a 4. And these factors to the following squared binomial. minus 1. All right? And well, this is from the conic sections. This is y minus k and this is plus h. And the vertex will be uh, h, which is negative 1. Well, actually, negative 1 and k, which is 2. Isn't that the coordinate of the vertex? Negative 1, comma 2? Yep. Well, of course, we don't have to do all this every single time, like finding the vertex and again, going through the focus, the directrix, the lattice rectum, everything. No, we don't have to. I'm just doing it, just doing this, just uh, for this one particular example, just so you can see, uh, you know, how how it's real how do we relate the parameter from the parametric world to the um or parametric world to the rectangular world so everything checks out of course well how do we go about the graphing this kind of functions okay let me go to the graphing calculator and so you can see And if you have anything that's just clear. Okay, so in order to plot parametric equations, number one, you might want to make sure that you are in the right mode. So click on mode. And from there, uh, let's scroll down one, two, three times. And then you will see one, two, three, four functions, well, the four modes. The function mode, which is the one that we use all the time to plot functions, f of x equals whatever function. And then the second one, which is the parametric mode. Scroll one to the right and click, click on enter, actually, not on, on enter. And well, we will later use the polar form when we get to polar coordinates. Yeah, I guess maybe, maybe by the end of the week or next week. And then from here, uh, okay, let's just quit. Second quit and go to y equals. Now, the presentation of for your inputs on your parametric equation, those are not gonna be anymore y1, y2, y3, the same way we did it for when we use, uh, I guess, what was it, the methods of integration, like Simpson's method, you know, and trapezoid rule. So in this case, we have a set of equations, one for x and one for y. And let's just type our equations for the exercise that we have, which in this case is t squared minus 2t. t squared minus 2t. And y, which is t plus 1. Okay, before you click on graph, make sure not to blink. Because, well, the, when plotting parametric equations are basically blink and you miss moments. So, be sure not to blink. So, oh, okay, okay, let, okay let me just click graph. See what's going to happen. Well, no, it, I, I didn't get... Uh, okay, go to window. And in this case, we want, to, we want the window from, for t. So, we got from 0 to 4. And let's let's change also the window. Okay, so let's do the, the t step by one, the window for x. So we got the smallest value of x to be negative one. Let me put negative two. T 
to the largest value of x, which I think it was 8, let's put 9, with scales of 1, y min, let's start at negative 1, why not? And the largest value of y we got was 5, let's put 6. Okay, and graph. But for whatever reason, I got this uh, sharp corner, so maybe if, I refi if we refine uh, our t step to be 0 0.01, okay, 0 0.01. And did you see how the graph, okay, hopefully you didn't blink. Did you see how the graph went in that direction? In the same direction that we did on paper. Following these arrows, of course, I mean, that's a graphing calculator. The graphing cal calculator sort of does the animation. However, how do we represent that on paper? Well, using arrows, you know, so like these green arrows to denote those, that, that, part, that the whatever particle going through this path is going in that direction, not the other way around. All right, so, yes. Uh, I changed the, yeah, that's a good question. What value did I use? Did I change to make it not pointy? Okay, go to window and the T-step. Make it a little smaller, 0 0.01 instead of just one. Okay, we will be playing with this T-steps for, for, for a while, which, which is good, so. All right, so going back to the next example, uh, so let's let's sketch the curve represented by x equals sine t, y equals cosine t. Write this equation in rectangular Cartesian form, and what type of curve is it? Give an interval for t over which the curve is traversed traverse only once. Well, number one. Uh, of course, we can make a little table here. Uh, I'm gonna do. I'm gonna briefly do a table. Why not? For different values of t. And then from here we are going to obtain those of of y, x and y rather. All right. Well, in this case, because we're talking about you know trigonometric functions, let's take values of t that will give us really nice and easy outputs. And in this case, well, I'm just going to give them away: zero, pi over two, pi, three pi over two, and two pi. All right. So from here. Uh, what's the value, okay, what's for x, when t equals to zero, what's sine of zero? zero. What's, what's cosine of zero? One. Pi over two, what's sine of pi over two? One. What's cosine of pi over two? Zero. Cosine of pi? Negative one. Zero. zero, and cosine of pi? Uh, sine of three pi over two? Negative one. And this is zero, and well, two pi is basically the same as zero because that's one cycle, you know, around zero, one. So let's plot these points, okay? And in this case, uh, mm -hmm. let me go to the graphing calculator. So let's graph it. Let's graph it using the graphing calculator. So let me, let's clear whatever you have. Clear, okay, oops. Okay, so what, what, I, what is it, sine? Sine t. sine t, close parentheses, and cosine t, close parentheses. And again, bl don't blink, graph and don't blink. Well, for whatever reason, we didn't get the whole circle. And that's again because of our window. Now, yes. Can you press zoom and then press zoom in? It automatically. Yeah, we can do that. Mm -hmm. uh, zoom. That's one way. Zoom fit, which is, I believe, zero. zero? Yeah. But in this case, we're not getting the whole picture. And that's because, well, here is where we need to bring up the concept from trigonometry. Recall that in this case, 
order pairs around the unit circle well number one we have them in the order cosine and sine and that's when we go counterclockwise in this case we have them reversed sine and cosine instead not cosine sine but in this case we need to think of the period of this function in which in this case it happens that the period okay for the window um, t max let's put 2 pi oh what am i doing sine t okay so window okay so t max so 2 second pi to make sure that we get one cycle here so well in this case i think i'm going to use some standard hopefully that works okay yes however okay i'm not getting this uh i think i blinked and i didn't see the direction all right so let me do zoom zoom in okay let me just do zoom in real quick no it's not going to do so when, whenever you whenever you blink and miss the direction just change any value on the window uh let's put one for example for team in and graph oh come on it's not showing window zero or just change change one of the functions put t for example well, okay yeah syntax perfect and second quit if you retype it it doesn't sync it yes it does right yes. so let me just do sign by retyping it mm -hmm. and that sign t oh it didn't well it does on yours mm -hmm. well, so i'm going to change it with with another okay let me clear this let me just put another random variable a random letter rather graph it's going to do that or window okay now y equals to sign no it didn't maybe it went too fast maybe okay for the window let me change the t step to one let me do one and it's going to make it pointy let me do okay let me do an even smaller number mm -hmm. oh yes it's working this time hmm? so now we're able to see that it's going in the clockwise direction all right what about the conventional type of equation so before going back to the original exercise so let me clear let me recall that and the points on the unit circle in trigonometry are of the form x equals cosine and y equals the sine all right and well when we plot those angles that goes counterclockwise should we get the same if we do this parametrically well let's have a look indeed it does all right and well I mean look at the picture that doesn't really look like a circle that's because of the aspect ratio of the screen of, uh, of a graphing calculator that's why those circles look like ellipses but of course I mean think of the of the marks on the axis well they're perfectly one unit one unit and even though the aspect ratio of it they're not the same so but it's still a circle okay so what else okay let's go back to the paper let's plot this circle and this is going to go uh, t equals so rather it's going to go in this direction oh wait no 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 oh yes right it's going to go in this direction and all well, the different points you have them on the table all right so let's look at another one. Oh, by the way we need to eliminate the parameter in this case so to eliminate the parameter uh well 
this is where trigonometric identities are going to come into play because well we have an x equals sine and y equals cosine and well there's a trigonometric identity that relates sine and cosine one of the most common identities any ideas which one is it hmm? no not the tangent one it only relate it only includes sine and cosine Okay, so how about, let's start with sine squared plus cosine squared. What is that equal to? One. One. But okay, okay, let me rewrite this as a sine t quantity squared plus cosine t quantity squared. And I'm just putting paren random parentheses, but there's a reason behind. That's because I will go back to write sine equals to x plus cosine, which is y squared equals to 1. And what is that equation? x squared plus y squared equals to 1. Isn't that the equation of the unit circle? And these values of the trigonometric functions come from the unit circle. So this is what we're doing now, eliminating the parameter. And while they're asking us for the interval for over for t over which the curve is traverse 1. So just take either sine or cosine because both functions have the same period, right? They go to 2 pi. And if you use the value of the, fun the, the, the formula p equals 2 pi over b, that's to find the period of a trigonometric function sine and cosine of the form. Let me write down the form. Um, y equals a sine or cosine okay let me do just sine a sine bx plus c plus d i mean this is the shifted sine function with horizontal shift with some vertical and horizontal stretchings and the vertical shift which is given by the plus d term and in this case to get the, the period right here well so 2 pi over what's looking at either sine or cosine what's the value of b implied one. 1 so 2 pi over 1 that's 2 pi so that means that the interval for which is going to go one cycle it's in the interval 0 to 2 pi all right For the next examples, uh, I really don't want to do another table of values. I'm just gonna go to gonna go with the um, uh, what's it called um, the, graphing the graphing calculator. And but we will algebraically get the the Cartesian equation. All right. So <clears throat> clear, clear and just type the equation that you have for example number three, which in this case is, and I know we have thetas, uh, but I mean whether theta or t is the same, so don't worry. So that's two cosine, two cosine of theta over four, or three over, or three over four, and five, sine the over 4 all right and let's have a look at this one well okay again don't blink so you can see the direction well in this case it's going to take a while it's not going to give me oh yes <coughs> hmm? yeah but i'll have to wait until well, maybe, oh, I can do it. Okay, I'm going to do a t-step of 0 0.01, just 0 0.01, and assume of, how about standard, 6. But in this case, well, uh, we only got one portion of it. Uh, so in this case, there is an issue with this. So number one, we need to find the period of the function first before, so we can use the value of t. Okay. Uh, so in this case, period equals to pi over b 
and this is 2 pi over what's the value of b in this case? One fourth. One fourth, right? So dividing by one fourth is the same as multiplying by four, which is eight pi. That means in order to see the whole picture here, we need to set our calculator window to t min of zero and at t max of eight pi. Otherwise, we wouldn't be able to see the entire picture. And well, let's click graph again and see what we got. Hopefully you didn't blink and you were able to see that the, the ellipse in this case went counterclockwise, counterclockwise. So let's draw the graph and well, let's do the graph real quick and notice it went two units in the horizontal direction and one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five units on the y direction. And while I'm drawing it in the clockwise, I mean in the counterclockwise direction, but that doesn't, but I stopped drawing, I stopped drawing it. How do I know, uh, how do we know that I draw it in the counterclockwise direction? Well, we need to put arrows again in this direction. All right. Now we need to represent this equation in terms of, of a Cartesian equation. So what I'm going to do here is rewrite this equation x equals 2 cosine theta over 4 and y equals 5 sine theta over 4. So in this case what we're going to do is solve for the trigonometric equations first. That is cosine theta over 2 over 4 rather equals x over 2 and sine theta over 4 equals y over 5 and again we are going to use the same trigonometric function uh, again but be, but something to keep in mind notice on the previous example and this is important check this out so sine x or sine x squared plus cosine squared x equals 1 this identity holds true for your favorite x, even if x is, I don't know, sine of x cubed squared plus cosine squared of x cubed, as long as the angles are the same. It's, it's, uh, it's true for all the angles, or sine squared of 3 alpha plus cosine squared 3 alpha equals 1 as long as both angles on both terms are the same. And of course this means it's no exception for theta over, over 4 that we have over here. And that means cosine squared theta over 4 plus sine squared theta over 4 and that equals to 1. And what's cosine theta over 4? Isn't that x over 2? The whole quantity squared and sine theta over 4 is y over 5. Quantity squared equals to 1. Well, let's simplify this by square both numerator and denominator. So that's x squared over 4 plus y squared over 25 equals to 1. And what is the equation of? Both variables are squared, they're both positive. It's an ellipse. Does that match with what we did in parametric form? Yes, it does. It's a it's a it's an ellipse, right? With no, notice the denominator of the y variable is larger than the denominator of the x variable, which denotes that the ellipse will extend vertically in this case. Alright, and after I think the connection between the the parametric version of the function and its Cartesian representation is the same. However, this Cartesian representation is, mm, I don't know, it's, 
it's flat if you will because it doesn't tell us anything about the orientation of the path what really tells us about the orientation of the path is how the parametric equations are set in this case and in this and that tells us well when we what we get to see that when we when we plot that in parametric form all right